Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today's video is about cognitive function development and what I believe is this. We're severely lacking on content and theories on cognitive function development. And that's why I want to take my first probing steps at explaining this to you. Explaining to you how cognitive function development works, how you can use it, how you can grow within your personality type, how you can develop your cognitive functions. Let me know in the theories down below, in the comments down below, what you think, what you would do, how you would do it differently. So, what I believe in this is this. There are four skills to think about when talking about cognitive function development. There's outgoingness, there's curiosity, there's optimism, and there's drive. So, cognitive function development has all to do with how expressive you can be, how curious you can be, how optimistic you can be, and how driven you can be. So, when we are lacking in one of these scales, there is still something to develop. When we are reserved or shy or inhibited, we might not be able to express our cognitive function fully. When we lack openness to other people's ideas and to learn new things, we might become very stuck or narrow in our use of our cognitive function. When we lack in optimism, we might be very critical or competitive with our cognitive function, but we might lack to use our abilities to do something constructive or positive for others or for ourselves. When we lack in drive, we might know how to do something, but we might lack in the ability to do it, to execute it. We might lack in a sense of knowing what to do. We lack intrinsic motivation. So these four scales are the most important to look at when looking at cognitive function development. And I believe there are four stages of development. There is the first dimensional stage, the personality stage, the second dimensional stage, which is the cognitive function stage, there is the third stage, which is the power stage. And there is the fourth stage, and that is the self-actualization stage. And it's in the fourth stage that we can truly come into our own and into a sense of self-acceptance, in a sense of trust in our own abilities, in a sense of drive, in a sense of ability to do things, in a sense of ability to express ourselves, in an ability to be curious. So before we can reach this stage fully, we need to go to stage one to four. Starting with number one, what you'll feel in the not one dimensional stage is that your use of a cognitive function, if you use it at all, is very flat or simplistic. You might show an ability to be optimistic, but you might lack an ability to express yourself. You might be shy, you might be close minded, you might be stuck in your ways, and you might be overly reliant on other people to tell you what to do. So a person who is very optimistic but lacks in drive will be very focused on what other people tell them. A person who is lacking in outgoingness is going to be, in most situations, shy or reserved. But they have gained one dimensional use of a cognitive function and that means they can be optimistic, they can believe in themselves, they show early on a desire to do good or to do right, they show strong morals, they are described as positive. Another example is the curiosity type and the curiosity dimension is uh, when a person shows a strong interest in their ideas and in learning but a lack of openness to express themselves, to show things to other people, a lack of optimism, a lack of drive, don't know what to do, don't know what's right or wrong, need other people to tell them, tend to be very critical of other people, tend to feel questioned a lot, tend to be a little competitive. Yeah, the one dimensional type, uh, they have some dimensional use of a cognitive function but not complete control over it. It's in the two-dimensional stage that we start to truly show a cognitive function. So you might have, uh, for example, the openness stage. An uh, openness type is a person who can be both outgoing and curious. What that means is they can express themselves and their ideas with other people. Think of the introverted intuitive that can share their theories with others. But perhaps with a lack of optimism and drive, that's just theories, it's not something they are ready to act on, or it's not a vision, it's not something they want to do anything about. It's just a theory, a wild hunch that they've had. They are able to express it, but they might be very critical of it. They might lack in optimism, they might think it's something stupid. I had this theory, guys, so uh, it's like this. Oh, I know it's stupid, yeah, I know it's shit, yeah, I know, it's not good. <laughs> 
Yeah, so you could say that in this stage there is a sense of anger. Often there's a wrestle with anger or a sense of uh, wrestling with uh, your own theories, being stupid, being not good enough, not working out in reality. So there's a translation issue for these types. You could also talk about the confidence stage. And the confidence stage is when a person is able to be optimistic and driven. So what that means is they are able to express themselves and to believe in themselves and to go out and do what they think is right, no matter what other people think. But they might be very shy about this. They don't dare to talk about it with other people. They don't not like to show off what they can do to others. They are, they are afraid of being judged. They might be very stuck in their ways. They might struggle with new ideas and they might be very unreceptive to other people and what other people say. They have a very strong belief in their own ability, so they are confident, but they lack an ability to go out and talk about it with others. So they might not rec uh, feel recognized for their abilities. Another example is the outgoing or optimistic type. They might struggle with lacking curiosity and drive. Or, for example, you have the person who is highly curious and highly driven, but lacks in optimism and outgoingness. Or maybe you have a person who is highly curious, highly optimistic and highly driven, but lacks in outgoingness. Yeah, that's the three-dimensional stage. And this is where you start to truly use different cognitive functions together with one another. You can use perhaps two cognitive functions at once. It's not just introverted intuition, it's not just theory anymore, but you're also able to apply rules to dictate your own thinking. Is this correct? Is this right? Is this wrong? Does this add up mathematically? Does it add up emotionally? Does it feel right? Do I believe in this? Does this resonate with me? You might, in the three-dimensional stage, show an ability to be not just a visionary, not just a person who has their own intellectual project, but can also set goals for themselves and set rules for themselves and can set uh, criteria for themselves and for success. Where am I going and how should I get there and when should I be there and what should I do to get there? What decisions do I need to make? What actions do I need to take? So in the three-dimensional stage, we start being able to truly execute our cognitive functions and to truly do something with them. In the, on their own, they can feel frivolous or like a mere hobby. But together with others, they can feel highly useful and highly important. And you know, there is a stage where you go from some, where something feels just like a hobby to where it starts to feel like something that is actually good or important or necessary. Now, I've always felt like I was a person who showed high, high outgoingness, high curiosity and high optimism, but sometimes lacked in drive. So what I found is that uh, I was very introverted from a young age and forward. I was very intuitive. I was very optimistic, but I've always lacked a bit in drive. And that is the ability to truly go out and do something with my life, not just think about it. So what I've been developing and what I've been working on is my judging functions. So feeling judging and intuitive judging. What I've always felt naturally good at has been my intuition, my introverted intuition in particular. Later on, I also became better at my introverted feeling. So self-actualization is when you can use all cognitive functions together as one. And that's, I feel, when you truly show the ability to embody your personality type's natural abilities. So what tends to happen here? Well. For example, with the ISFP, the ISFP truly steps into a sense of humility or modesty. The ISFP becomes the pillar of honesty and of diligence and of action and spontaneity and being a natural and honest and upright person. The ISTP steps into a sense of expertfulness, truly knowing what's right, truly knowing what's wrong. The ISTJ steps into steadiness, which is uh, true reliability and accountability. The ISFJ steps into trustworthiness, truly being somebody people can depend on and rely on. The ESFJ steps into popularity and ability to get liked by anyone or to get to know anyone, to befriend anyone. And the ESFP steps into true playfulness, which is the ability to truly let go, have fun, enjoy the moment and truly 
connect with other people on a deeper level. The ESTP gets influenced, the ability to be heard or seen by anyone and understood by anyone, the power to get heard and understood and to be known for who you are and what you can, to show your power and your strength and your confidence. The ESTJ becomes the pillar of effectiveness, the ability to execute anything, to get anything done in a fast and productive manner. The ENTJ becomes the truly most dominant personality type, able to execute any decision, to get anything done, to realize any crazy idea or hunch, to see through any vision or project. And the ENFJ becomes the true pillar of passion, which is the ability to express yourself truly to other people. The ENFP becomes uh, the example of wildness and nature and of being able to know what's right and wrong and of showing an understanding of nature and of people and of the world around you and of freedom and what life really is all about. The ENTP becomes an example of inventiveness and ingeniousness and ability to devise or come up with a solution in any situation. The INTP becomes the most stereotypical example of intelligence and ability to know what's right and wrong and to truly understand and have insight into something. The INFP of conscientiousness, of truly knowing what's right and wrong and of showing high integrity and moral conduct. The INTJ of strategy and of knowing how to execute a vision or to see something true over time, long term, in the smartest, most masterful way possible. An INFJ becomes a character of mystery, the person that can truly illuminate mystery and shed light on the most difficult matters of life and why we are here and what we all are here for. So I think self-actualization is what we are all striving for, 4D cognitive function use. Now, how much you use it in a specific situation, that might vary. In some workplaces it might be easier to be a certain way, but not other ways. We might be confident in some situations, but not all. We might find ourselves to be in a situation that is very difficult for us, or that stresses us out a lot. We might find ourselves in a situation uh, where it's hard to be optimistic, or where it's hard to be open where we feel we need to hold on to ourselves, where it's hard to share with others because we fear to be rejected. So these things can vary from stage to stage, but I do believe overall you can see a trend in how you've grown and how you developed yourself and in where you're headed and what you're looking for. So let me tell, you, tell me in the comments down below, do you think this is a good approach to personality psychology? Does this work? Could we use this to truly understand cognitive function development? Thanks for watching and if you like this video visit my Patreon page patreon.com slash ericthor where you can support me in writing theories, developing videos and creating content for all of you. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video.